Hi, I'm Vivek M. Chawla, Product Manager for Platform CLI and the DX Foundation Libraries. I'm here to announce the dev preview release of the Salesforce DX MCP server, a local model context protocol server that's optimized to deliver outcomes that Salesforce developers depend on. I'll be talking about non-GA features in this developer preview. Please remember to only consider generally available features when making purchase and investment decisions. If you haven't heard about MCP, or maybe you have but aren't quite sure what it is, here's a quick intro. MCP is short for Model Context Protocol. It's an open protocol created by Anthropic to standardize how applications provide context to large language models. You know how you can use a USB-C hub to connect different devices like a monitor, printer, and keyboard to your laptop? Well, MCP is like USB-C for AI applications. It helps connect AI models to a wide variety of data sources, services, and tools that are exposed as MCP servers. Now, customers and partners use a lot of tools, services, and data to customize, extend, and build apps on the Salesforce platform. Collectively, we call that the Salesforce Developer Experience. It helps to understand the architecture of Salesforce DX to see why MCP is so important. Here's how Salesforce DX delivers millions of daily interactions with developers. First, the Salesforce platform exposes core and near-core services through a variety of standard and specialized APIs. Then, each developer environment uses a suite of Node.js packages called the DX Foundation Libraries to work with those APIs. The libraries securely store auth information for the orgs a developer works with. They move metadata into and out of orgs and support advanced functionality like source tracking and decomposition. And when new platform capabilities like AgentForce arrive, the modular nature of these libraries lets us add developer support quickly. Built on top of the DX Foundation libraries are the Salesforce CLI and IDE extensions. These support our frontline IDEs, VS Code, which runs on a developer's local machine, and Code Builder, which runs on cloud-based VMs that a developer accesses from their browser. The CLI also supports third-party IDEs and automation platforms. Altogether, it's a diverse group of non-agentic tools. But that's changing fast with the rise of agentic tools from pioneers like AgentForce for Developers, A for D, and newcomers like Claude, Cursor, and Windsurf. Those agentic tools are using the Salesforce CLI to deliver crucial DX outcomes, but they're guessing how to do it when they do. They're usually smart enough to figure things out eventually, but when it takes five tries to do what should have been done in one, that's a lot of wasted API calls. That's why we built the Salesforce DX MCP server. We're giving agents a trusted set of tools that deliver consistent outcomes for developers. Trusted because we let developers decide which orgs agents can interact with using locally stored auth info. Consistent because we integrate directly and keep up to date with DX Foundation libraries instead of simply being a CLI command proxy. The end result is agents that deliver desired DX outcomes faster with fewer API calls, increasing productivity and reliability when using agentic IDEs. And the exciting part is that the MCP server for Salesforce DX is now available as a developer preview. We're starting with a small set of fundamental tools with plans to add dozens more by Dreamforce. And because loading MCP tools consumes the limited context space of MCP hosts, we support dynamically loading tool sets to ensure the smallest possible footprint based on the user's needs. Best of all, this is an official Salesforce open source product, ProdSec approved and available for use by any MCP host via NPX at Salesforce slash MCP. All right, enough slides. Let's see this in action. Over the next five minutes, you're going to see Salesforce DX MCP server support AgentForce for developers in a vibe coding session with AgentForce DX Pro Code tools. We begin inside VS Code with the new Agentic Chat feature, powered by AgentForce for developers. The Salesforce DX MCP server, running locally via NPX, is active and ready to help. I'll start by asking how many orgs I'm connected to. A4D sees the Salesforce DX MCP server has a List All Orgs tool and asks permission to use it. 
Like most Salesforce developers, I got a lot of orgs authenticated to my CLI. I don't want to risk an agent making changes to the wrong orgs, so I'll use the org scope security feature of the MCP server. Now the MCP server config panel lets developers inspect registered tools of each server. It also provides easy access to A4D's MCP settings file. Now the Salesforce DX MCP server is currently allowing access to all orgs. Changing this to default target org prevents the server from accessing any org that's not a local or global default org. Now when I ask, how many orgs am I connected to? I'm going to get a very different response. The list all org tool is non-destructive, so I'm going to mark it for auto approval going forward. Now, instead of 66 orgs, the MCP server only sees one. And by running SF config list, I can confirm that this is indeed my local default target org. Now, even if I try bullying the agent, the MCP server won't budge. This is a key security advantage that's unavailable when an agent runs CLI commands directly. As I gain confidence, I can ask the agent some interesting questions and the query org tool will help get answers. This is the first action run against a specific org, so the agent uses the get username tool. I'm going to mark this tool for auto approval as well, and then take a peek at the query A4D wants to run. Everything looks good, so I approve the query org tool. And in no time, I learned that there are four sysadmins in my default target org. Now that I've shown you the basics, let's do some vibe coding with A4D, MCP, and Agent Force DX Pro Code. I'm in the testing panel where Agent Force DX Pro Code lets me run agent tests. These are LLM based tests that help ensure my agents operate as expected. When I get the results, I see there's a failure. The utterance is a request for weather information, and the agent was expected to provide a forecast. Unfortunately, that's not what happened, so I'm going to ask A for D to help. I've got a prompt that includes the CLI command for running agent tests. When I give the prompt to A for D, it recognizes the command and asks permission to run it. While waiting for the results, I want to highlight that this prompt is a temporary workaround. By Dreamforce, there will be an MCP tool for running pro code agent tests. But for now, let's see what A4D says about the failing test case from the CLI results. It looks like there might be a problem with the Weather Service API, so I'll ask A4D to get that Apex class. To do that, the Retrieve Metadata tool will be used. You can see A4D negotiating with the DXMCP server to figure out what to do next. Now this is a better way than an agent making multiple failed API calls to an org. Once A4D is on the right track, I give one last approval and the class is retrieved. I ask A4D about the callout being used by the Weather Service class. It tells me that the class is using a named credential called Weather Endpoint. I want to check the configuration of this named credential, so I ask A4D where it's defined. Unfortunately, there is no weather endpoint named credential, so I ask A4D to find any named credentials in my project. Turns out there actually is a weather endpoint, but it's got an underscore while the callout in my Apex class doesn't. I ask A4D to fix the underscore for me. It goes into the weather service class by itself and modifies the incorrect callout by adding an underscore. I double check A4D's work and I ask it to deploy the class. A4D wants to use the Deploy Metadata tool, so I approve the request. After a successful deployment, it's time to check if the fix worked. I use the CLI to run the Agent Preview command, and I connect to the local info agent. I ask the agent what the weather's like today, and I'm very pleased to see that there is now a working forecast. Now that I've verified the fix, I ask A4D to stage and commit the changes to Git. A4D uses the terminal to make this happen, and I confirm that the Weather Service class has no uncommitted changes. So that's the demo. For your next step, use one or more of these short links. They'll help you with things like getting started with the Salesforce DX MCP server. You can also join the waitlist for the developer preview of A4D's Agentic Chat. And finally, you can ask questions, report issues, and share feedback as you test drive the Salesforce DX MCP server with your development tools. Thanks for watching this demo. Stay tuned for more to come between now and Dreamforce.